Parks. Parks. Parks House. Parks House. In your eardrum. Scooter Rocks. Man, wherever you want me to be. You're now listening to Harps House. To Harps House. Welcome everybody to Harps House. I'm your host, Jonathan Harper. Now here at Harps House, we talk about just about everything under the sun, from relationships to UFC post-fight breakdowns to who's rated next. And today we have a special guest. When I say rated next, I mean somebody who's excelling on the court, on the field, in the studio, or even on the slopes. Now today's special guest on Harps House is Julia Tano. Now, she joins Harps House for the first time all the way from Switzerland via Skype on this Wednesday afternoon. Now, welcome to the show, Julia. How are you doing today? Thank you. I'm very good. And you? I'm good. I'm good. Now, for my listeners, Switzerland is about eight hours ahead of Los Angeles, and that's five hours ahead of New York City, if you were wondering about the time difference. Now, Julia, you're currently 18 years old, and you are the second youngest on the women's uh, ski big air roster at age, at age 18 for ESPN and the X Games. How does that feel to be so young on such a big stage? Well, I feel pretty honored to be there because, like, I've always been looking up to the people I'm competing against right now, so it's pretty special to be there and to be competing against my idols. So yeah, it's pretty cool to be there at such a young age. Gotcha. Now you've already made some major moves and some some pretty big events. Like I, I read that you, you hit the podium at three big slope style events in 2016, and then you returned to the medal stands at the X Games in Aspen and you got a, a bronze medal. What was, what was that experience like? It was crazy. Like, Coming into X Games for the first time, I didn't like have any expectations. I just wanted to enjoy the week, enjoy to be there. And then uh, that happened, and I was like, I don't know. I didn't know what to say anymore. It was just crazy. What was uh, some of the reception like from some of the people who were there at the X Games? I'm sure they were so excited to see you and, and see you compete. Yeah, I, I guess so. I don't know, like... For my whole team, like this year, we were kind of like many Swiss people in X Games for the first time. So it was pretty special for the whole team. And then also for the boys, my my teammate got third as well in bigger. So that was pretty cool for our whole team. Okay, okay. Now, how long have you been skiing and, and what made you want to become a pro skier? I've been skiing since I was like two years old as I live in like a mountain village so my parents pretty much raised me on skis um I've I've been doing alpine skiing for a while first which probably helped a lot for my skiing itself um but then it just got kind of boring so at some point I found the park at my home hill and just there every weekend with friends and that's kind of how I started. Okay, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, so from Alpine to some of the X Games, what was that transition like? Uh, yeah, it was actually like in just a few years. So I've been doing Alpine skiing until like 12 years old. And then I found free skiing and it, all kind of, it went fast for me. So I've been competing after two years or three years of doing free skiing and then I already competed in World Cups. So, yeah, I never expected to be at the X Games this quick. That's really cool. Now, now, what are some of the most popular sports in Switzerland for uh, for teenagers and people around your age? I think skiing itself or snowboarding is kind of popular. Then, for sure, soccer is one of the most popular sports here too or i don't know tennis maybe as well gotcha do a lot of people play like uh basketball not really the people that i know i think i don't know like probably in the cities it's a little more gotcha but like in the village that I live, I don't know anyone playing basketball, really. Gotcha, gotcha. And you said you grew up in a pretty small village, right? Yeah, exactly. Gotcha, gotcha. And what do your friends and family say when you, you get a chance to kind of travel and compete all around the world? What do they say? 
Yeah, it was a, I don't know, it was a, probably a hard time for my parents letting me go, like, all the time, because I started traveling when I was about 15 years old, and I moved out of our house, too, like, I'm going to school in a totally different part of Switzerland, so I'm only home at the weekends, even in summer, I think that was kind of hard for my parents in the beginning, because they, like, never see me, (laughs) but now they're really, really happy they let me go, obviously, because it all worked out so well. Do you have any brothers and sisters? Yeah, I have one brother. Does he ski as well, or what does he do? Um, he, he can ski, but he's not really skiing that much anymore. He also moved to a different city. He's going to university, but he's playing a lot of ice hockey. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah, gotcha. not that much of skiing, more ice hockey. And since you said you started traveling at 15, do you feel like you missed out on any of the things that, I guess you would say, like regular teenagers do? Like hanging out on the weekends and stuff like that? Uh, Not at all. I think it's like a big advantage that I could travel from such a young age. I saw, I've been to so many places. I saw so many different things already. I think that's really special for for my age because I know not many people get this advantage Right, right. I gotcha, I gotcha. What was it like the first time that you had success at an event? Like, I see you, you did well at the, uh, is it the Nine Queens contests? And you also podium, you also reached the podium at the FIS World Cups. What was that like, like you said, kind of making that transition and, and doing really well at a young age? Uh, yeah, it was crazy. Like, my first year competing I in the World Cups, it was it was weird because how I said, like, I was standing next to my idols and then suddenly I was just up there on the podiums with them, which was kind of weird for me. And I just, I don't know, I I did, I did never really expected it because I just ski like, I gave, gave it my best and then it worked out so well. So it, it's just really cool. Gotcha. Yeah. What was that like? Like you said, uh, being able to meet some of your idols and talk to them face to face. What was that experience like? Uh, in the beginning, I was really nervous every time. I was like, <laughs> oh, no, like, I don't want to talk to, to them. Because also in the beginning, my English was like not that good. So I was scared to like not know what to say. But I don't know. Now they're all my friends. And it's just super cool how we're all like getting along so so well with each other. OK, so, yeah, who are some of the people that you look up to in, in skiing? Uh, definitely Kaya Tursky, because she's been, like, the queen of slope style for many, many years. Gotcha. Um, then, yeah, there, there's actually a lot of people I look up to. Okay. Now, if a young kid or a young adult sees you in action and they're like, yo, that's what I want to do. I want to be on the slopes just like her. What advice would you give them? Just go on the mountain, have as much fun as possible, and then just try new things. And it, I don't know, just have fun skiing and then keep keep working on the stuff you want to reach and keep following your goals and then you'll be there. And like you, I'm sure, like you said, you have a big advantage because you started at such a young age. So like you said, you grew up on the mountain, right? So I guess that would be really important to start as early as possible. Yeah, of course it helps to start as early as possible, but I don't know, like, I, there's a girl on my team, she started skiing when she was, like, or, like, she skied before, but she started real free skiing when she was, like, 24, and now she's, she won, like, the overall fist ranking of slope style, so I think even if you're, like, not that young, it, it can still work, you just have to give it all. Okay, okay. Now, I see you compete in both big air and slope style. Can you explain to my listeners the difference between the two for somebody who really doesn't know anything about skiing? So, big air is just one jump. Mostly, like, mostly it's a bigger jump than in the slope style. It's just, like, one big jump where you have two or three goes, and then you do one or two different tricks, and then the people who judge us judge it and then slope style is 
mostly three jumps and three rail features. So rail features is like, uh, I don't know how to call it in English. I just like it's metal. Like, yeah, it's like a trick on like a metal, like a metal handle kind of rod that's up in the snow. Yeah. Yeah, gotcha. exactly. Gotcha. So gotcha. then mostly there's like three of these and three jumps. Gotcha. All right, well, we're going to take a quick break here at Harp's House, and when we come back, we're going to hear more from pro skier Julia Tano. So we'll be right back. We're back at Harp's House. Again, I'm here with pro skier Julia Tano. Now, Julia, we were talking a little bit on the other side of the break about your experience uh, growing up on the, on, the, on the slopes. Now, what's a typical off-season like for a pro skier? Do you guys have a big off-season, or how, what's that experience like? Uh, we all decide ourselves how long our off season is going to be. So probably this year mine is going to be from end of May until end of July. And in between there, I'm just doing a lot of workouts to keep my body like in like fit for all the stuff we're doing during winter to keep prevent myself from injuries. And we do a lot of trampolining, trying new tricks on trampoline first. Then sometimes we go on water ramps too to learn new tricks. Um, yeah, so that's basically basically our whole off season. And then of course we're home home for a few weeks, so we can see all the friends that we don't get to see during the season. Gotcha. Now, what's it like competing on, like you said, such a huge stage of the X Games compared to? I guess you would say training or in the off season because I see a lot of a lot of skiers and a lot of snowboarders compete with earbuds in so it's almost like it's just you on the mountain is that what you do is that how you is that how you treat it Well during competitions yes cuz I just need to focus on myself just like listen to music and just focus but in summer I still listen to music but I'm I like to shred with friends, so like to push each other too. That really helps. Like when we're a group of people, and one someone tries something, and then you want to try it, so it pushes the whole skiing. Gotcha. Now I've seen snowboarders and BMX riders. They train in like a foam pit. Do do skiers do the same thing when you're trying new tricks in the off season? There is some some skiers that do it with rollerblades into foam pits i've never really tried it but um i'm i did some water ramping last summer so that's basically the same just jumping into a pool of water so that i i think that really helps because you learn how to get the like where you are in the air and judge Um, and you don't have the you don't have the uh the dangers of falling on the snow Exactly. So you just fall into a pool, which can really hurt sometimes, but <laughs> like you're not going to hurt yourself. It just, right. I don't know, it's a hard, hard ground to fall, but <laughs> right. not really. It gives yeah. a little bit. It's better than the, the mountain for sure. Exactly. Right. Now, knock on wood, have you, uh, have you had any bad injuries since you're so young? How, how, how have you done with that side? Um, I broke my hip three years ago. In the half pipe, unfortunately. Oh, man. Um, yeah, that took me out for like four months. And then I broke my collarbones l- last summer. But that's like, I don't know, I just had bone injuries, which is really good because bones heal pretty quick. Okay. So, yeah, that's like just smaller injuries that I had. And yeah, obviously we all, I think everyone had some concussions in our sport. So I had like two concussions, but fortunately they weren't that bad. Gotcha, man. That's, those are some, those are some pretty, pretty, pretty bad injuries. And you're young when you, when you were injured, I guess sometimes people say when they get injured, they at least they get a chance to, you know, spend time with family while they're rehabbing. Did you get a chance to spend time with your family at all when you were trying to rehab and and get well again? Yeah, I I had for sure more time with my family than usual, which was good. But in the other side, I was a lot at school and rehabbing like at school. 
So during the week I was still gone, but at least at the weekends I couldn't really do anything else than staying home. So yeah, I saw my family a lot more than usual. Gotcha. I got you. Well, yeah. Uh, question. So I know a lot of you guys have sponsors, and you have like you have stickers on your helmets, stickers on your skis, on your jacket, and things like that. And here in the states, we have a sport which is like it's NASCAR. So there's advertisements all over the car. So how do how does that work with sponsors? Do they approach you guys, or you guys approach them? Like, what are some of your sponsors? Um, in the like in the beginning when you just start, I think you have to go to the sponsors and like ask them if they want to sponsor you but now it's more that the sponsors like ask us gotcha. so because you're big yeah. time now <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i don't know that it's it's uh, it's going mostly going through my manager too okay. so, so i don't have to do like because i'm still at school and everything so i don't have to worry about like that getting kind of stuff. sponsors and doing contracts, so yeah, gotcha. that's a little easier. I saw you were a monster, right? A uh, monster skier. Is that still correct? Are you still with them? Yes, exactly. Gotcha. So I bet you get a bunch of stuff that has monster all over it, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got a lot of stuff, especially a lot of monsters. I think my whole like cellar from the house is full of monsters gotcha 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 now all my guests who visit harp's house give us a little i call it a virtual tour and it kind of gives uh my listeners a little bit of uh, a peek into who you are so i'm gonna i'm gonna get it going what are your three favorite musical artists oh that's hard um at the moment i'm listening to ed sheeran a lot okay and then J. Cole. You like J. Cole. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. And then uh, ASAP Rocky. Gotcha. gotcha. I don't know. It, it changes all the time, though. So, like, sometimes I listen to stuff that I'm, like, after a week, I'm like, okay, I can't listen to this anymore. <laughs> gotcha. So, yeah, it, it changes a lot. Have you seen any of those three in concert yet? Nope. Not not yet. Actually, I'm not really like, going to concerts that much. So, but I I hope this summer I get the chance to go to some music festivals. Oh which yeah, will be cool. that'll be real fun for sure. Now, what's your favorite food? Um, it's a typical Swiss food. It's called raclette. Okay, what's and that? And it's just like it's just cheese. Um. You, it's like a piece of cheese that you heat up, and then you have potatoes with it, or you can have it with bread. It's actually really good. But oh. it's, oh, I think we only have it in Switzerland. I was gonna say I don't know if we have that here, but I'll have to I have to Google it and see if I can find it. <laughs> yeah. Now, what's uh, what's been your favorite country so far to compete in? Oh, uh, that's hard. Um, I think South Korea was pretty special because it's just like a whole different tradition and I never expected that they can actually like build such a good park and everything. So I think that's one of my favorites because it was just so different to all of the other experiences we had. Okay. All right. Now uh, back to the skiing tip. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Do you see do you still see yourself skiing or do you want to do something different? It depends on how my body does, actually, because I don't know if I'm still fit enough and like I don't uh, ready enough to do slope style. I, I'd love to still ski, okay. but I don't know. I, I'll see how it goes and then just every year and then decide then but I hope I'll still be skiing gotcha gotcha and are you you're gonna be you're gonna be competing in the 2018 uh uh went not the winter x games the uh the winter olympics Olympics. yeah um yeah I hope so it's still not clear who's going because obviously we have to like qualify to go there but yeah at the moment I'm 
I'm really hoping to go there next year. Okay, cool, cool. Now, if you weren't a pro skier, what do you think you would be doing? Oh, uh, that's hard because <laughs> I really don't know. I think I'd, I just finished my high school and I don't know. What's your favorite I, subject? I, um, I really like English. <laughs> okay. Cause, yeah, because it, it's pretty easy for us because we're traveling so much. So it's like easier to be at class and like do the stuff because we actually speak English. <laughs> But um, otherwise, it's like we have some sports classes that you, it's like more theory about how your body is doing and like how you work out, which is pretty interesting, too. OK, so you guys travel as a team and pretty much train together and go to different competitions and even school together. Is that correct? Exactly. Like not all of my team, but a few of my team are also still at school and we're all going to the same school because it's like a, a sports school where we can have a lot of off days, like off school, which is pretty cool for us okay. to travel around all the time. Gotcha. Well, again, thanks so much for stopping by Harps House and carving out some time out of your day in Switzerland. Now give some of my listeners, or get, actually give all of my listeners your social media contact information so they can keep up with you and root you on and uh, give you good good spirits into some of your upcoming competitions. So my Instagram is just Julia Tano, and my Facebook is the same. Yeah, okay. that's basically all I use. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. All right, well, sounds good. And again, thanks, everyone, for tuning in to a special international edition of Harps House, again, with my special guest, Julia Tano, who is a professional skier. And again, be sure to subscribe to Harps House on your podcast section of iTunes or in the Google Play Store. Also, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Harper. That's I am H-A-R-P-E-R. And check out the website as well. That's harpshouse.com. Also, if you want to email me, feel free to email me at harpshouse1 at gmail and send me any comments, suggestions, or concerns because your feedback is always greatly appreciated. And again, thanks for, ta- thanks for finding the time out of your day and your night to stop by Harps House. Thanks again, Julia, and God bless. <laughs>